guys, Ash here coming at you today with another Raid Shadow Legends Champion Guide. Welcome to the video, guys. It's going to be a good one. Really one of the best epics in the game today, and it's going to be my man, Stagnite. I also have the full Stagnite lore, and there's a lot to say about Stagnite, so stay tuned. We're going to get to it all in today's video. Uh, so Stagnite, Banner Lord, Epic Champion. He's got the armor, man. He's got the shields. He's looking freaking good, and the best thing about this champion is his speed and his HP, along with obviously a tremendous kit. He's got some really killer base stats. Gives you a lot of flexibility when building this champion, especially because A, obviously he's easy to keep alive with almost 21k HP, uh, over 1,000 on defense, and you want your debuffer, generally speaking, whether it's PvE or PvP, to be fast, and 107 base speed is fantastic not only that but obviously his kit is incredible on his a1 each hit has a 50 percent chance of placing the big version of decrease speed that is amazing against ice golem against spider and against the fire knight basically any boss in this game who is susceptible to decrease speed debuff stagnite's got you covered it makes him one of the best debuffers in the game for those three dungeons in my opinion uh really good two time hitter for fire knight totally fire knight viable as well on that a1 uh, on the a2 an aoe attack he's a simple but incredibly powerful kit on his a2 hunt master an aoe attack has a hundred percent chance of placing a decrease defense and a decrease attack for two turns when you have the sniper mastery okay it is important to note here that the support tree when we get to the masteries and grabbing that sniper uh as a tier five mastery is going to be imperative because we don't want this to be a 95 percent chance we want it to be a hundred and of course sniper adds that five percent additional chance at landing our debuffs decrease attack and decrease defense so Fantastic stuff there on the A2, provide you have Sniper. On Lead the Pack ability, he was actually the first champion in the entire game to be given an increased accuracy, and it comes in the form of his passive. It's a really handy uh, passive to have to complement an already incredible kit. Lead the Pack places an increased accuracy big version on an ally for one turn each time that ally has a debuff resisted by an enemy. There is no cooldown, which is notable on this skill as well. Now, Stagnite can actually surprisingly put out some damage i'm gonna pull up hell hades for the damage multipliers here uh and he has stagnant as a 4.5 it might be the highest rated champion that we've reviewed here so far on raid champion god's youtube channel uh they give him a godlike decreased defense godlike decreased attack rating a legendary damage rating in ok in crowd control and turn meter control you can see he's basically a champion that you can use as a debuffer pretty much anywhere in the game right especially provided the affinity matches aka if you're going against magic affinity you might want to look at another champion like duck the pierced uh like maybe a tayrell somebody like that but really everywhere else stack knight is amazing uh when we look at his multipliers he has a godlike rating a four attack on a double hitter on his a1 a lot of people don't realize that however the downside is guys when we look at his base attack it's only 859 for that reason, I'm really not trying to look for a bunch of damage from Stagnite. However, I have tried. You're not going to see this build today, but I've tried in the past building him for damage. And it's been nice to have maybe a secondary or a third damage dealer. And he can put out a sneaky amount of damage from those A1s against bosses and from the AoE attack on a three-turn cooldown on his A2 ability. However, again, on today's build, I've since kind of changed things up, especially with hard dungeons and more difficult content across the board. To Well, I'll show you the build that I use right now on Stagnite. It's a little unorthodox, and we'll talk about why, but I wanted to share it with you because this is the build that obviously I have success with. So, where is he? Staggy. Man, what an incredible champion, dude. I, mean, I get excited just looking at the dude. He looks so cool, man. I really love the aesthetic on this dude. I really do. Uh, as you'll see, guys, I have a speed and a shield set on this champion. Now, if you go to any website, you're not going to see recommendations on a shield set, but I have this for two reasons. Number one is I used to use him as a debuffer uh, on a seer team. You know, this is before I had reset champions, so I had to really prepare for multiple waves and staying alive, and there's a lot more to it than just that. But I wanted that extra buff for her to be able to strip off, but I liked having that shield on him quite a bit. It helped with, obviously, survivability, and the reason why it's a good fit on Stagnite is because his base, base HP for 
for a debuffer is only really rivaled by the Void Legendary Venus, you know? He has a lot of HP, so I want to take advantage because, of course, the shield value is going to be based on that of the wearer. So it's easy to scale that HP. I figured, you know what? That's a nice extra utility I can get out of this already incredibly competent champion who's going to help me out in a variety of different areas in the game. Now, the more, I would say, uh, a traditional sets would be accuracy, would be perception sets. You can't go wrong with speed, accuracy, perception on really pretty much any debuffer in the game. Uh, maybe like Ghostborn, you might not want to go that route because he has the irresistible decreased defense, but he still has other debuffs you want to land. So yeah, I would go, if not shield, if you don't need the shield, then why bother, right? Just go with triple perception uh, because perception is probably the best set in the game, right? For PvE, certainly. So I have him in a shield. Masteries, uh, I would say this is a very typical mastery build for Stag Knight, you know? Uh, we're not overthinking anything. We're coming down here, grabbing War Master for extra damage, obviously against bosses primarily. Uh, you could use him against clan bosses. Well, War Master is going to be really helpful. I would say that I, I went with Life Drinker. I'm just a fan of the Life Drinker mastery. Uh, getting that extra heal and sacrificing a little bit of damage uh, versus going with single out. I went hard. I, instead of going with Heart of Glory, I also went with Shield Breaker. Uh, honestly, I use him a lot in I used him a lot and still use him in faction wars and against a lot of waves so for that reason you have to go against those valkyrie shields and stuff like that so again every time we say this on the channel but when you're talking about masteries go with what makes sense for you your team your account uh, on the support tree most importantly we're getting pinpoint accuracy charge focus swarm smiter for all that extra accuracy on this champion that's going to be the most important stat on him is accuracy speed and then some survivability hp again if you want a little bit extra damage nothing wrong with going crit rate on the gauntlets as long as you can keep them alive right uh, we pick up lore of steel here it's going to help us get a little bit extra speed lore of steel for me would be pretty mandatory if I did go with triple perception or, you know, accuracy and speed sets. Uh, but it's still kind of nice to have to get a little bit extra speed, a little bit extra, uh, well, in this case, just speed, accuracy if you're rocking perception. Uh, we talked about it before, but Sniper is going to increase that 95 to 100% on that A2. So that's really one of the most important masteries, along with Master Hexer. Uh, Master Hexer, the chance at extending not just the decreased defense, not that it's just the decreased attack on the A2, but also the decreased speed on the A1, which again cannot be overlooked, a tremendous ability. Uh, also, a sniper helps out the decreased speed on the A1, 55% chance on each hit. So it's a very dependable decreased speed on that A1. In terms of artifacts on Stag Knight today, we have accuracy on the banner. I think most people are going to be going accuracy on their Stag Knight banner. Uh, if you can get away with it and you just want to pile on a little bit of attack, that's probably the place to do it because, again, when their attack is this low, when you want a little bit extra damage out of a champion, a support champion, for example, when their attack is this low, you're better off not going for attack percentage anywhere, but using one or two of your accessory spots, as long as they're alive, to go with attack flat stat, because it just not, doesn't scale that well off of that low of a number. So we went defense on the amulet, we went HP on the ring. Uh, you know, we always say this on the channel, but even on shield champions, on bolster champions, you don't want to totally neglect defense either. Uh, we have speed on the boots, I'm sure. Again, we want our debuffers nice and fast. I didn't even notice we had a quad accuracy roll on these speed boots. Let's, uh, let's ascend them, why not? Oh. Well, because we have no lesser oils. That's why not, Ash. That's why not. Awesome. Man, I feel like no matter how much I farm Sand Devil, I run out of oils in two seconds. <laughs> anyway, we have HP percentage on the chest. We have HP percentage on the gauntlets. Again, you want to build them for a little bit of damage? No worries. Go crit rate instead on the gauntlets, okay? His debuffs is important to point out here. Uh, we are placing these debuffs so again, they're not predicated on a critical hit there, which is nice. Uh, so HP or defense percentage, obviously in a shield set, I want to prioritize HP. And on stats, again, we're going with speed, accuracy, and survivability on this champion. All right, guys, let's go ahead and take him into a quick, right now we actually have him in Faction Wars, trying to time these guys, if I can, around when the Faction War is live. So stage 21, uh, let me get Baron out of there, try to make it not that dirty of a pay to win team. Ash, let's put uh, Lady Anne Annabelle, who we did a guide on either this morning or last night, depending on when these videos go out. Uh, here we go. So we need some damage dealer in there. So that's going to be uh, uh, Staltus, Dragon Bane, and then R and Rhonda as well. And then Archmage Helmet, which is one of my favorite champions out there. And uh, 
Let's see how the squad does. It shouldn't be that difficult here. We have a lot of support on this squad, which is nice. Lady Annabelle, primarily. Uh, but let's see how we do. We have a lot of damage, too. Man, Ronda, I ought to do an updated guide on Ronda. Maybe I'll do that on the main channel, guys, because... Wow. That was a lot of damage, huh, guys? <laughs> Stagnite just setting the table, and that's what he does best, right? Just sets the table, decrease. The most important thing here, guys is that he's faster than your nukers. And you'll see he's the third person in order. I was making sure that was the case right there, right? And, you know, whether you're talking about Arena, by the way, Stagnite is a great debuffer for the Arena too, damage mitigation. Uh, it's best to run, I still prefer like a Madame Ceres because she has the buff removal as well, or maybe even Orion the Conjurer. But if you don't have either of those champions, uh, I think that Stagnite is probably your next best option, or maybe Duck the Pierce because he is defense-based. But uh, I would still, you know, say he's a viable debuffer, especially when you're just farming your Great Hall, right? Uh, but most importantly, whether it's Arena, whether it's PvE, whether it's Faction Wars, as you see right now, we want to make sure that he's going before Ronda, in this case, and Saltus Dragon Bane, our two damage dealers. So the speed threshold is going to be dictated by the speed of your nukers. Okay, uh, so here we go, guys. I, we're looking pretty dang healthy here. And I have to say, the shield is coming in handy. I'm not going to say we would have lost if we didn't have the shield, but it's nice. I mean, the first AoE attack, essentially, or the first couple attacks on all these waves, thanks to good old Stagnite carrying that shield, it's going to be absorbed. And that gives our healers, uh, Lady Annabelle primarily, a chance to kind of get in her cooldown rotation and get all those good abilities up and reloaded, get those leeches applied to the enemies. So this team is like just incredible here, right? And this is why we don't need to build them for damage. And the same thing goes everywhere, not just Faction Wars, right? Why build him for damage when I'm already, you know, doing a great job here with the squad? I guess to answer my own question, it would just be to min-max the exact time that it's taking us to make these runs. So, hey, if I put crit rate gauntlets on him instead, you know, maybe we could complete the run in, what, five seconds faster, you know? For me, it's not that big of a difference, so that I ha I'd rather have him tanky for areas that I really do need him to take a bunch of hits. Let's stop that multi-battle right now. Take a look. Again, nothing's going to jump out the page here at you guys, except for, again, Lady Annabelle and Stagnite basically doing the same amount of damage, primarily from Warmaster towards the end there. Obviously, Stagnite a little bit on the AoE attacks. Look at all those heals, by the way, from a Lady Annabelle. Of course, she is in regen and immortal, so take that into consideration. So Stagnite is just a boss, man. Use him everywhere. One of my favorite debuffers, amazing base stats. We compared him to, you know, Duck the Pierce and champions like that. But I, I do have to note, you know, a champion like Duck, he has the same ability, right? Decrease attack, decrease defense. Uh, but it's on each critical hit. He has to be critical. So you have to build Duck the Pierce with 100% crit rate. You don't have to do that with Stagnite. Furthermore, he's 10 speeds slower than Stagnite. I'm not saying he's better or worse, but Stagnite's bringing quite a bit different uh, the highlights, if you will, strengths to the table compared to the, some of the other best debuffers out there in the epic category. And as I was mentioning too, I compared him to Venus uh, only in the sense that they both have a ton of HP for debuffers. And especially for an epic, that's really, really incredible stuff, guys. All right, let me show you the lore on Stagnite here, guys. As I said, quite a bit. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. <clears throat> the Stagnite's true name has long been cast aside and forgotten, just like his face always remains hidden from even the closest allies behind an ornate helm. But armor forged from the finest steel and decorated with gold and silver leaves very little room for doubt about the origins of this champion, such as a concert of style and craftsmanship that can only be found in the land of Kirok. On its own, this revelation means little. There are countless, countless knight errants forging from Karak to make their uh, mark across Teleria and win glory for themselves. For them to have display, displayed valor and skill sufficient to catch the Arbiter's eye is not uncommon, yet there is an air of mystery about the Stagnite that makes an assumption such as this seems to be far too convenient and mundane. Whatever the case may be, the truth will only be known to the warrior himself and to one who gains his allegiance. 
Wounded honor is the reason for this secrecy, but the Stagnite has more reason to abandon his lineage than most. Far from mere wandering paladin, he was once the younger brother of King Garin, known as Bloody to scholars of Teleria. Though his innate talent allowed the Stagnite, the Grand Duke at the time, to master the arts of war with ease, he had, to, uh, he had little in interest in following the ideals of chivalry. Spoiled by riches and sheltered from the woes of the world, he spent his youth jousting, hunting, and feasting away in the company of his peers. It was hunting that he excelled at the most, and his massive undertakings often led groups of young nobles into the forest for weeks, allowing them to pursue the most exquisite game royal lands had to offer. It was then he, he earned the nickname Stagnite, for some of his from some of his closest comrades, and it was then he learned the ropes of leadership and strategizing. But so engrossed was the young duke in this little pleasures that the truth of his brother's reign eluded him for years. Meanwhile, King Garin grew increasingly paranoid and violent. His extortionate taxes bled the peasants and citizenry dry, and his constant fear of a coup led to a number of influential nobles being imprisoned or even executed. Eventually, Garin's own uncle rose up to lead a rebellion. The Stagnite, unaware of the truth, joined his brother uh, as honor demanded and battled the rebels on numerous occasions. His strategic talent had proven to be instrumental in securing key victories for Garin's army and saw the rebellion defeated after a year of bloody fighting. But victory was not enough for the insane king. He personally devised excruciating forms of interrogation and execution for the nobles involved in the failing uprising. Such was Gorin's, uh, Gorin's cruelty that even his brother started, uh, finally started to realize how far he had fallen. Alas, an attempt to reason with Gorin saw the Stagnite accused of high treason and thrown into the dungeons of Kirat Castle, there to await his own execution alongside his uncle. But the bloody spectacle Gorin planned, uh, planned was never to take place. For there were other forces at play. Something odd transpired in the dungeons the night before the last rebels were to be put to death. Every single sentry guarding the prisoner cells collapsed in an instant, still alive but trapped in deep slumber. Before the stagnite realized what was happening, a woman of cold, unearthly beauty, clad in glimmering armor, appeared before him. Knowing her to be the Arbiter, a chosen herald of Lumia herself, the knight fell to his knees in reverence. But the Arbiter had no use for worship. She sought a champion to undo the evils wrought upon the kingdom of Kerak. She bid the stag knight to rise and revealed to him that his brother, King Garin, had unwittingly served the designs of the Dark One by wakening Karak and allowing insidious cults to rise through the land. She promised the stag knight a chance to redeem himself in exchange for the service of Lumia's uh, champion. Without any hesitation, the knight accepted. In a flash of arcane energy, he was transported to Garen's throne room. His arms and his armor returned to him by the Arbiter's will. The bewildered royal guard fell to the stag knight's halberd, and though it pained him greatly, he put Garen out of his misery before more guards arrived to the commotion. In the days that followed, news of the king's death spread throughout Karak like wildfire. Celebrations were held in most major settlements, and the king's uncle was freed from prison and installed as the new monarch. His rule is said to have been the start of a new golden age for the people of Karak. As for the stag knight himself, he is not there to see he was not there to see Karak's return to normal life. With his duty done, he had solemnly cast his name and former life aside and pledged himself to Lumia's cause. Whatever duty the Arbiter had for him remained a secret, though, nor tribes who dared to venture into the Winterlands often spoke of the warrior clad in armor of purest white in the centuries that followed. 
who this warrior was or what his purpose could be, they did not know. But the legend holds that seeing the stranger's silver antlers and luxurious azure mantle in the blizzard was sure to be a good sign for those who are pure of purpose and the doom to those who hold darkness in their hearts. There we go, guys. Good story of Stagnite. I don't know about you guys, but I wasn't like, I think I mentioned this before. I was never, I never, never really got into the lore of Raid Shadow Legends, but I found off of doing this in these champion guides and sharing these lore stories, it gives me, I don't know, more familiarity with the champions. Next time I use them, I'm like, oh yeah, I know your backstory, Stagnite. So I find it pretty cool. Hopefully some of you guys do as well. Thank you for watching. And as always, take care, guys.